Hey, a friend, Chris here from Live Logic Pro Rules, the website and channel that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. This week, I'm really excited to share with you a brand new three part series in collaboration with Focusrite, all about getting started with the Scarlet fourth generation interfaces in Logic Pro. If you're a longtime viewer, you may have noticed things have been kind of hardware heavy here on the channel lately, and this is very much intentional. One of my goals this year was to help Logic users of varying hardware needs get up and going with their gear and recording Logic. And I couldn't think of a line of interfaces more deserving of being covered than the Scarlet set of interfaces from Focusrite. So if you're not familiar, the Scarlet interfaces are purportedly the best-selling interfaces of all time. And while I have no numbers to back that up, based on how many Scarlets I see out in the world, I'd believe it. And what I love about this latest generation, the Gen 4 interfaces, is the focus on ease of use. From the moment you connect the interface to your Mac, the startup sequence that gets you up and rolling, Clip safe, auto gain, the routing capabilities, the Focusrite Control 2 app that you can use on your iPad and iPhone. I love this latest set of Scarlets. I'm really impressed, truly. So in part one of this three-part series in today's video, using the 18i20 version of the Scarlet, I'm gonna walk you through the hardware, the front panel, the back panel. I'm gonna get you going with the Focusrite Control 2 application. And by the end of this video, we're gonna be recording some audio. Now, just to be clear, Focusrite has a Scarlet for everyone, whether you're a bedroom producer or musician, all the way up to a recording mix engineer. It really just depends on your needs. So if you just need two in and two out, you could go with the Scarlet Solo, the Scarlet 2i2. Or if you have more complex needs, such as you need MIDI in and out, you could go with the 4i4. Or if you need optical ports, you could get the 16i16, 18i16, and 18i20 and you get increasing amounts of input. So I just want to make that clear, just because I'm using the 18i20 for this set of videos doesn't mean there's not a Scarlet for you, but the benefit of using the 18i20 for demonstrative purposes is that you get to see all that's available with the Scarlet range. Let's start out by examining the front panel of the 18i20 starting on the left-hand side. First, there are two Neutrik combo jacks, which can accept everything from XLR inputs for microphones to quarter-inch inputs for line-level signals, and instrument inputs as well. So when you need to quickly connect a microphone, a synth, or a guitar to the Scarlet, you can do this right from the front of the interface. In between the two combo jacks on the front is the TalkBack microphone. And I've gotta say, of the four interfaces I've owned through the years that included an onboard TalkBack mic, the fourth gen Scarlet's TalkBack mic is hands down the best I've experienced. It has plenty of level and it's clean, free of noise. Something that most interfaces can't seem to accomplish, in my opinion. To the right of the combo jacks are the channel select buttons, with which you use to select the individual input channels of the Scarlet, that you then take control of that channel using the input gain up and the other buttons to the right of the input gain. For example, let's say I connect a microphone to input one. I would then press the channel select one button to select channel one of the Scarlet, and then I could use the input gain knob to increase the preamp gain for that input. And I love the halo around the input gain knob. This makes it easy to understand where the level is set for that particular channel. But there are further controls beyond input gain for each channel. Starting in the top row to the right of the input gain is the link button, which allows you to link input channels together. One and two, three and four, five and six, and seven and eight. For example, if you're recording a stereo signal like a stereo synth or overheads for a drum kit, you would likely want to link two channels together so you can control them as one. So by pressing on an input button and then pressing the link button, you can link two corresponding channels together that you can then control together. The second button in the top row is for phantom power. In this case, if you're using a large or small condenser microphone that requires phantom power to be able to run, you connect your microphone to the Scarlet, select that channel using the input selector button, and just enable phantom power and drive up the input gain to a healthy level. The third button in the top row is the instrument button, which is specific to inputs one and two. If you intend to connect or record an instrument signal like a guitar or bass, you connect your instrument to one of the two front panel inputs and then press on the instrument button to switch that front input from line level to instrument. But beneath the link, phantom power and instrument buttons are three more buttons that are even more awesome. Button number four is auto gain, which lets the Scarlet set the preamp level for you to a healthy level that is ensured not to clip. So for those of us who are recording ourselves, like let's say you're recording yourself playing the drums, it's likely not convenient for you to set preamp levels as you're trying to play the drums. Instead, you could set auto gain to set the level for a single channel or multiple channels at the same time. You simply enable auto gain for your channels, begin playing your instrument. The Scarlet will analyze the audio for a 10 second window and then set preamp levels. 
And if you feel that the levels are not quite how you would set them, well, you can always adjust it after the fact manually using the input gain knob. Button number five is clip safe. Sometimes you set a preamp level at what you thought was healthy, and then you end up playing a little louder than you expected to. This can result in clipping the converters, and this can ruin takes. But when you enable clip safe, the Scarlet is continuously monitoring your signals 96,000 times per second. If the signal that you're recording is at risk of clipping, the Scarlet will literally turn down that signal to prevent clipping. And button number six is the air button. The air button provides some tonal shaping for your signals as you're recording. By pressing it once, the button turns green. This provides a presence boost using an analog circuit to the signal you're recording. Press the air button a second time, it turns yellow. This provides both an air presence plus harmonic drive to your signal. So in addition to the presence boost using the analog circuit, the Scarlet will also add harmonic saturation to your signal. And whatever you set the air mode to is part of the sound that will be recorded in the logic. Which, pro tip, you can also send audio out of the Scarlet into the inputs to apply this air presence, this harmonic saturation, two signals that were not recorded using the Scarlet, using the IO plugin in Logic Pro. Right in the middle of the front panel are the input slash output meters for the Scarlet. The meters can show you either the levels of the inputs that you're recording currently, or by pressing the output button, meters one through eight will show you the current output level of outputs three through 10, plus our output meters for the main left and right speaker outputs. There's even comprehensive monitor control, starting with the alt button. So let's say you have two sets of speakers that you want to be able to switch between to get, you know, a different perspective as you're mixing or as you're producing. By connecting your main stereo pair of speakers to outputs one and two, then you would connect the second set of speakers to any two outputs on the back of the Scarlet. And you can use the alt button to switch between your main left and right speakers and the second set of speakers. You just have to make sure to assign that set of outputs as the alt pair of speakers in the Focusrite Control 2 application under the routing tab. There's a dim button, which provides a convenient way to decrease the level of the output. There's, of course, the output button, which allows you to switch the view of the meters on the front panel of the Scarlet from either input to output. There's a mute button to mute the main output, plus the main speaker level control, which also has a white halo to give you an indication of how loud or quiet your main output is. To the right of that is the talk button, which allows you to temporarily engage the talkback mic. The talkback mic can be assigned in the Focusrite Control 2 application to any one of the six different mixers, A through F and any outputs assigned to that mixer will be dim so your artist can hear you as you're speaking to them. And all the way to the right are the two headphone outputs of the 18920. These are digitally controlled and show a halo around the knob so you can see the current playback level. Now, taking a look at the back of the 18920, on the right-hand side, we have inputs one through eight, and these are all Neutrik combo jacks. With all eight inputs, you can connect a microphone using an XLR cable, as well as line level signals such as a synth or a drum machine instruments like guitars and bass you will have to connect specifically to inputs one and two on the front. And a really cool thing about the AT920 is that if you connect an instrument or a microphone to the front inputs, those take priority. So if you have something connected to the back inputs one and two, those rear inputs won't be active as long as you're using the front panel inputs. To the left of the inputs are line outputs one through 10. These are Neutrik quarter inch jacks. Line outputs one and two or left and right are for your main stereo speakers. And while outputs three and four on the back of the interface are designated as the alt monitors, you can actually use any set of outputs on your Scarlet for those alt monitors. And what's really cool about the Scarlet is that you can use the various line outputs to send audio to something like a headphone amp or have a multi-channel speaker set up thanks to the monitor group function of the Focusrite Control 2 application. To the left of the outputs are both an in and out for MIDI. This way, you can easily send MIDI in and out of Logic Pro using the Scarlet. And with a recent firmware update, you can now receive and send 16 channels of audio via the ADAP port, meaning you can connect other mic pre's, other interfaces for a total of 24 channels in and out. Lastly, all the way to the left-hand side is both Word Clock Out and SPDIF, giving you an additional two channels of inputs and outputs. Now, that's just what's on the interface itself, so the front and back panel. But what I love, especially about the ATI 20 Generation 4 Scarlet, is that all of the input and output controls are also remotely controlled. So I can control every aspect of the interface from the Focusrite Control 2 app on the Mac, as well as using the Focusrite Control 2 app for iPhone and iPad. So we're going to dig into that a little bit in this video, but first we should get set up to do some recording. So let's get the Scarlet set up with Logic Pro so we can start recording an electric guitar. Because I'm going to be recording electric guitar, I need to connect my guitar to one of the first two front inputs of the Scarlet. So I'll connect my guitar to input one. 
With input one selected, I'll press on the instrument button to switch the input from line level to instrument. Now, anytime that you're recording into the box, you have to make the choice of, do you want to use the near zero latency mixer of your audio interface, or do you want to use the software mixer in Logic Pro? Now, it all depends on which Scarlett you're using. I'm using the ATI 20, so there's actually up to six separate near zero latency mixers. With something like the Scarlett Solo or 2i2, there's a button on the front of the interface for enabling or disabling direct monitoring. With Focusrite's direct software mixer, if I play my electric guitar, you hear the clean direct signal of the guitar directly connected to the Scarlett. No doubt about it, direct monitoring is a huge help when you're recording in Logic Pro, but latency is getting in the way. But in this case, I would like to play my guitar through one of the Amp Designer amps in Logic Pro. So I'll mute channel one in the Focusrite Control 2 app so I don't hear the clean direct guitar. And in Logic Pro, I'm going to assign the input of my audio track to input one of the Scarlet. Next, I'll open the library and load a guitar patch for my audio track. Then I'll record enable my audio track and enable the software mixer in Logic Pro so I can hear my guitar through this amp designer patch. All right, with everything set up and ready to go, I can start recording. There you go, in part one in this three-part series all about getting started with the Focusrite Scarlett Generation 4 interfaces in Logic Pro, I gave you a full-on tour of the front and back of this awesome interface. I walked you through some of the amazing new features such as auto gain, clip safe, the air modes, the Focusrite Control 2 app, and then we set up a session and recorded some electric guitar in the Logic Pro. In the next video, in part two, we're gonna dive deeper into a recording session, dig deeper into these new features and what they bring to the table for your recording sessions. I'll check you for more later this week. Take care.